Hi, and welcome back to the Fractured Rooster Garage. We're back in JR's big shop today with the Bronco. Holly came through with that coil driver right here. Ignition coil driver. Uh, that showed up today just a couple hours ago, actually, and it's already on. JR's here. He's got it wired up, and as soon as, just as I was walking in the door, he was cranking on it, and I heard a sputter, and I told him, stop, stop, shut it off. We gotta get the first start on camera. One downside of the coil driver is you have to install this 10 pin connector. It's just a bunch of IO ports, uh, inputs, outputs for tack driver, two-step, line lock, electric fans, a bunch of other stuff if you wanna to add to it. Um, that all came with the kit. That's all optional stuff. Unfortunately, that big mess of 10 wires had to get hooked up to, what, to get one wire? Yeah, but I'm gonna hook up the two steps. So I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> okay, two step. You know, we've got access to an electric fan now, so why don't we do that? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, AC kick, so we'll be able to add a couple hundred RPM when uh, Holly knows the AC is turned on. So I suppose we'll use four of them. Yeah. Eventually. We're gonna go ahead and go full race car, obviously. Yeah. So should be good. Yep. Cool. Uh, I think it's got. Was it two, like unnamed? Oh yeah, outputs that you Auxiliaries can auxiliaries you can use for whatever whatever you want. So RP. Uh, well, you got it's supposed to be PWM nitrous or boost control, yep. right? So yep. you load up the program you want in the Holly software, and if you use your laptop, it's really nice to program all that. And you can have your nitrous trigger uh, wide open throttle because you know obviously this doesn't have a uh, throttle position on a, a carburetor, but right. now with the sniper you have throttle position, sure which does. is the best way. Yep. Yeah. So it's really hmm. sick if you want to go race car mode. So. Yeah. And it's, yeah, boost ready, nitrous ready, turbo yeah. ready. Man. I bet you could even run E85 through this, just set your target air fuels to like nine to one instead of 14, seven to one. It's got huge injectors, so. So, yeah, it's true. You'll have to cut about 30% off of your, your available horsepower. I think this one's rated to 350. Yeah. So it would probably support 250 horsepower engine on E85. Probably. Uh, Somebody will hopefully chime in in the comments below and let me know if that's the case or not, but yeah. I believe your limitation on E85 is usually we don't need injector that. size. We got the oxidizer. <laughs> oh no, oh no. Should be fine. Yeah. Nitrous control. Upward for inflection, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not done with this yet. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Maybe before we do a V8 swap or something, that's right. how we'll send off the, the 2.8 liter. Exactly. <laughs> All right, we, we've got a timing light coming. I forgot to bring mine with me. So while we're waiting, I thought I would jump inside. So while we're waiting, I thought I'd jump under the hood and hook up the uh, the coolant temp gauge and the oil pressure gauge. And uh, as I opened the door, I'm greeted with something really weird on the floor. And I, I went to grab it and I realized what it was. <laughs> I've never seen this before in my life. Uh, I'm guessing this Bronco has the same issues with the roof leaking as the Ranger did because uh, there's all kinds of water because the carpet's a little moist and there's there's mushrooms. There, there's mushrooms growing on the floor of the Bronco. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> That's the grossest thing I've seen in a really long time. I don't even know where to start with this. Testing time. Well, I mean, obviously, I think we should start it to start. Was, it, was that a deep pun? I don't know where to start. <laughs> My timing's all wrong. Oh, oh, man. Okay, so we're ready to start the engine for the first time with the coil driver. I did hear one sputter, so I think it's going to go. Yep. Uh, we've got a timing light now. And... It's hooked up to number one. You want to hit the key and I'll check timing? Yep. I think our timing, there might be a couple settings in the Holly. In fact, I know there is. There's a timing setting menu.
there's a culmination of the out with the old, in with the new. As you can see, under the engine bay, the air cleaner's back on. Most of the wiring is done. John's just wrapping up a couple little things over here. He's still doing the wire management. Yeah, it looks a lot cleaner over there. It's getting there. I took out every unnecessary <laughs> wire, finally cut all the junk out of here. Uh, and now we just need to tape the factory harness back up because it originally definitely had tape on all of that. Yeah. Which would make it look really nice if it was black, you know? Yep. Black is the key. Stealthy. Stealth. I'll match those brake calipers. <laughs> those brake calipers are awesome. <clears throat> A couple of zip ties and we'll be done here. Zip ties are completed. We're done. Zip ties are completed. I just wanted to tuck all that excess back there so we can add all the features back in later. Yep. And uh, yeah, try to kind of make all the wires sit nicely there. But yeah, this thing is set up. You want to hit that key? Sure. All right, Mr. John Ross, hit that key. If it doesn't work, I take no responsibility. <laughs> It looks like it's got a little bit of an issue with the priming squirt. I think the multiplier maybe must default to a V8 or something. It's probably way too much fuel because yeah. I put it all the way down so it stopped and it started. Yeah, so it, it cranks and cranks and cranks. Uh, to get it to start, you've got to swallowboard the engine, which kills the injectors momentarily. Well, until you lift your foot. Uh, flooring, it kills the injectors, and that's the only way to get it to start currently. But once it started, give it a rest. Nope. <laughs> Never did that before. No, it and, did not. And it's not even tuned. All right, we're out of the shop. It fires up. It, well, it fired up cold in the shop fairly well. Yep. I guess it was warm. Now, that'll be the true test of doing a hot start here in the driveway. I've got confidence. All right, it's going to run. <laughs> yeah, right to life. Right to life. Ooh, it's a little warm, even it's heat soaked just sitting here a little bit. I'm not sure where I'm gonna mount that yet. I think probably where it's at. I might make some type of flip up device. Yep. So when you clip you can flip it down and close the ashtray and that thing's completely hidden. Uh, otherwise, maybe in a little info section here. That would be cool too. But then I thought, crap's gonna be falling on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jump. Like it does with that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So let's get some drive data out of this thing. Yeah. I think yep. I have all the quarter mile acquisition stuff set up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> JR's got an app on his phone. We're gonna get, get a quarter mile. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, I can already tell. Just in three car lengths. Is way better. It is way better. The throttle instantly moved the truck. Before I, I kind of had to wait for it to stumble and then it would start to go. I would be probably quarter throttle. I'm at 10% throttle right now. the shop and we we applied one little learning cycle just from the startups we had in there but otherwise this is right out of the box and onto the car
certified ripper time. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna certify the first. <laughs> That wraps up the Bronco EFI install. As you can see, it's a certified ripper. It would uh, it would barely do that before. You'd have to really work at it. So, uh, yeah, way more throttle response, a little bit more power. I think there's a little bit more we can do on that timing table. And once it learns the fuel curves, yeah. Uh, but it's already got more power. I can tell the seat of the pants, the butt dyno. Approves. I mean, we just ran a 20 and we looked up the historical data on this and like the magazines ran a 19.1 on like a stock tire, baby tire, you know? Yeah. So like this is probably faster than they ever were from the factory in reality. I think that's right. I think yeah. the stock tire is probably like a 28 inch. This yep. is like a 30 and a half or so. So that's going to mess with the gear ratios. Yeah. Plus, we got some weight in the back. They didn't have, and probably had, didn't have two people in it. Two I'm sure no, they, they definitely testing. didn't have two people. <laughs> so, I should get out. It'll run a second faster. So there's probably three or 400 pounds in here. <laughs> Yep. Uh, extra so all right guys well that's it uh it took us a little extra time it's two video i thought this was going to be a one day install but you know things happen that was mostly our fault for not I realizing mean, we needed that, that yeah if, if you leave the old ignition system it's a one day install yeah, but for, that's definitely not our style and we've never left the ignition system we always just no, start over shred no. it all yeah yeah <laughs> all right well thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video well, that's one more of my cars back on the road. The other one, the other one, uh, first start on the Healy happened yesterday. Yep. Uh, there was a, it was kind of nerve wracking. Uh, you'll see that in the next video, but uh, it's healthy and running now. I think all your cars run now. We can't be friends anymore. <laughs> well, we got the Falcon. Okay. We got the Falcon. Okay. okay. I, I've always got a car that doesn't run. I can promise you that. <laughs> so, I've got like three. <laughs> we can remain friends. <laughs> We're trying a new look on the Ranger. What do you think? Is that squatting right? Nah. Just kidding. We're hauling about a half ton of dirt in a quarter ton pickup. <laughs> I told you I was going to put it to work.